what's up, everybody? It's Mr. Talk Box. Check it out. You need to like, subscribe, and catch a YouTube family and YouTube world, I am back. What's up? I hope everyone is well and blessed, like I always say. And you know, I mean it with everything before we get started. Please go and like and subscribe to the page if you kind of dig what's going on over here. Please go like it, share it. And uh, you're going to want to do that because uh, today um, I have another uh, giant um, in the industry. And you know, it's hard sometimes... You know, the, I got all my favorites, and you know, these are relationships that I've that I've had for anywhere between 10, 15, 20, 30, 35 plus years. And this is another one, man. This 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 brother here, this soul brother. Don't get it, don't get it twisted. He's a real, real, real soul brother, and he's my brother. So he's my he's my soul brother, my my Caucasian soul brother from another mother, for real, for real. <laughs> But but he's funky as all get out, and he's just a phenomenal musician, and uh, he's loved and, and respected by so many people. And so what I was saying is that these interviews is crazy because I got to pretend like, you know, I know nothing about these guys. You know, I don't know nothing about them, so we're going to pretend. So I'm, I'm going to act like I don't know nothing about this this young man right here. And I, but I, but really I do. Really I know so much about him, and uh, I'm just proud to have him hanging out with me today. On my platform, y'all show your love for this dynamic, incredible guitarist in our industry. Y'all give it up for my dear brother, Errol Cooney. Give it up. Errol, what's up, baby? Hey, hey, hey. hey, hey, hey. Thank you, man. That's What an introduction. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hey man, you know, hey, I'm trying to do my Don Cornelius, you know, slash Arsenio Hall, Sly Lil Carson. <laughs> Beautiful. I love it. <laughs> hey, brother, listen, man. Thank you for um, for hanging out with me on my platform, man. I, I don't take this lightly, man. I, I know everybody has busy busy schedules, and dude, you're you're one of them, um, man. You're you're you've been running for a long, long time, and um, I've been able to watch you grow, man, from day one, and I'm proud to say that. Um, thank you, man. Thank you. Very proud of you, man. And um, and I know your time is very valuable and precious, man. So thank you, brother, for for being here, for hanging out with me. Man, it's my honor. Thank you for having me, and uh, let's let's do it. Let's All my honor. Hanging out with you. All my honor. But let's get into this thing, Arrow. Let's get into it, man. Where are you from, bro? Uh, originally from Houston, Texas. Uh, but I moved a lot as a kid. Um, my dad's an actor, and so he kind of went where the work was. So we started in Houston, then we went to New York, and then moved to L.A., went to high school in L.A., and then moved up to the Bay Area. That's where I kind of got my start in music up there. What part of the Bay Area? Uh, I first moved to San Francisco, but I moved to Berkeley within a year. And then I was in Berkeley and Oakland for the rest of the 10 years I was up there. Errol, where, where did it start with you as far as, so did it start with guitar first? I always got to ask everybody because you just, you know, there's so many multi-talented uh, brothers and sisters that I, that I know, and I'm not sure. So did it start with guitar for you? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I wanted to play guitar from when I was little. I had, I had two older brothers. They both played guitar and sang and my whole family. The musical. My mom played piano and everybody sang. Uh, but when I heard the guitar, I was definitely into it from a very young age. So that's what I started on. So guitar, how, how old were you, bro? When I really started playing, I was uh, 11 or 12. I, said, There's, I think I was 11, but I'm told that I was 12. I think I was 11. Wow. 11 or 12. Okay, so you're 11 or 12. What did you, did you start playing in school, church? Where, where'd your beginning start? I started, I started, I was, and so the first, I got to tell the story, and I'm told it before, but that's a good one. So, so both my brothers played and sang, they're older than me, and uh, I went and saw them in New York at the time, where we lived, play their high school Battle of the Bands. They, they both were in bands, and they won. They won four years in a row. My oldest brother won the first two, 
And I remember the first time I went and saw that show, I remember all these big haired, you know, girls in New York screaming. I was like, man, I have got, this is what I want to do. This is it. Uh, so I, I, I started, you know, playing with my brothers really and uh, singing with them. And then I started getting into bands and stuff. Uh, you know, I was in a couple of my own bands in high school and then I got into jazz band and that really changed everything for me getting into jazz. And, uh, then I didn't get into church music till I moved to the Bay Area. I wasn't even really aware of it till I met Eric Smith and the uh, Eric and his brother Jubu. They really, uh, who, you know, Eric really got me started in my career too. Got me on my first tour and several cents. Uh, but those were, yeah, being, getting into high school jazz band, that was a big shift for me and the way I played and, you know, the way I listened and learned and then meeting them and getting into uh, playing church music. Those were two really big changes for me. Errol, what, uh, what year did you, did you move to the Bay Area and how old were you? I would say it was 1995 and I was 18, right out of high school. 18. And, but in between that, you guys, you said you guys kind of moved all around and traveled all around different, different places. Yeah, because... yeah. Yeah. So I, I spent a lot of time. I mean, every, I would go back to Houston every summer. So I still, you know, consider myself a Houstonian. I, you know, I'm an Astros fan. I know everybody hates the Astros right now, but I love the Astros and the Rockets and the Oilers, the Texans a little bit. But, uh, um, but yeah, I went to elementary school in New York and I went to high school in Los Angeles and then I moved to the Bay Area after that. To the Bay Area. And and when you yeah. when you got to the Bay Area, that's when the career actually kind of started. You, you the career career yeah. wise, right? Yeah, um, yeah absolutely. I, I remember I remember when I when I first met you, man, so when you, you I had always heard your name. Uh, he, he used to pick, used to talk about you all the time. And he's like, he would always say D, you got to meet my boy Errol, man. You got to meet him. He's he's just, you know, he's, he's phenomenal. He, he would speak real high of you. And uh, I remember when he first brought you, man, I remember when he first brought you to the studio, man, to my studio on SAC. And, uh, remember? dude, I remember it like it was yesterday, man. And... You were just getting on your, your, you were just getting on your way, man. And I remember, you know, the transition when you ended up going back to L.A. I remember all of that, man. But I don't want to step too, too fast. But what, so you were working with Eric and, and he's, were you doing a lot of local stuff or what were you doing with with, yeah. with, with, with him? Okay. Yeah. So, so I met him doing, I think we were playing the Cal Expo out, out there in SAC is when I first met Eric. And it was uh, a Robert Brookings gig. And uh, that was when I first met him. And then he's like, you know, and we started playing local stuff. We played with a guy named Fred Ross, you know, Fred Ross, the singer. And um, I, I was introduced to Eric by Brian Collier, actually, a uh, drummer who you may know. Absolutely. And uh, we played a bunch of gigs together around the Bay Area. And I remember at some point, I was still working a day job. I worked at a place that sold mini disc recorders. At some point, uh, I got offered a cruise, you know, like a house band cruise show. And I remember I called Eric like, yeah, you know, I think I might go ahead and do this. And he said, hold on, don't do that. You don't want to get involved in that world. And a day later, he called me and said, I got you on a tour with Sunshine Anderson. So... He uh, he was definitely instrumental in kind of that early part of my career path. Very man, cool. man, very cool. Big big shout out to little brother, man, Eric Pick Funk Smith and Brian Collier, Thanks man. Big shout, big shout out to them dudes, man. Um, so yeah. so that was your first kind of like your major first major gig, right? Was that where it started? Yep. Yep, that was it. How long did you play? With, how long did you? Was it a tour with Sunshine Anderson, or how long did you play with her? It was a tour. It wasn't too long because she had, she was on a record label called Soul Live that ended up folding. But uh, she had one hit song, uh, heard it all before. We I saw I was out with her for maybe the better part of a year, I want to say, and it wasn't too long. And then from there, uh, uh, 
Sheila, he called me again. I think that was Eric recommended me to Raymond McKinley, who is her MD at the time, bass player. And now you're still kind of you're still living in San Francisco, or are you still living in the Bay Area at this time, or were you living? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. I was still in the Bay Area. This was this was I was twenty two or twenty. This was right around two thousand two thousand one. I started getting these calls and doing these gigs. Um, so yeah, I was still up there. I moved to LA, back to LA, two thousand five. So after, so you did Sheila. E. How long was the run with Sheila? Sheila was again maybe six months or so. We did. Uh, I went and played in Japan with her. It was my first time going to Japan, and then we, then she was the MD for Beyonce for her first solo thing which uh, is tied to the movie Austin Powers Gold Member, which also my dad happened to be in the movie. So it was this crazy <laughs> kind of connection. Uh, so that was the first time I played on The Tonight Show. Jay Leno was with Beyonce and Sheila E. Wow. With her first single, which was tied to that movie. Wow. That was, I think, 2002. Wow. Listen, man, let's, let's, let's back up just a little bit. Um, you said when you went when you first got to, to the Bay Area and met, hooked up with, with Pickphone, you, you were doing some church stuff. You played in churches, right? Yeah, yeah. He got me, before he got me on the bigger gigs, he, he got me into some church stuff. I went out and played with the Gospel Hummingbirds with him, which was quartet. And my, you know, first time I listened to quartet music, and that was like, you know, it was like the, uh, the secret sauce I never knew about. I was like, oh my God, this is like, you know, combining soul and gospel and kind of country guitar stuff. I'm like, my, this is unbelievable. So I, I did that with him for a couple of years. I started playing at his church, uh, Mount Zion. And uh, then I, I did a, a couple live recordings up there through Carl Wheeler. And uh, that was all before I started touring. So yeah, that was late 90s. I started doing all that stuff. So I, I want I want to I want to talk about this for for a little just a minute, man. As as far as the the whole gospel thing and the quartet thing. Now, you you had never you had never done it before, right? Um, yes. So, so because, dude, now, dude, you live in that world so crazy because of you. And we're gonna talk about Jubal and all that stuff in a minute. But but what? So tell me about the experience of learning it, man. Because I, I meet a lot of guitar players. And I try to, I, you know, they want to really get off into to the quartet world. They really want to know what it's about. So what was your experience like? So when you first, was it a really big culture shock or was it, did it take you time to get it? Did Eric give you records to listen to? How did he, how did he, how did he, how did he jump you into the quartet world, man? I mean, he just gave me the music, you know, and, and, he, and he eased me into it because, you know, again, I, I didn't know anything about it uh, but I remember Mighty Clouds of Joy he gave me uh, you know I'm terrible with names and things it's all good he gave me a, a, a bunch of records and again it was it was it was challenging it's the, the way the music moves it's it's not it's not necessarily complicated but it's very unique and it it's you know just like anything else I'm always I'm still learning you know, every time I learn a song, but, but, but it definitely, if luckily I was really into it. So that made me, you know, that made me, gave me the desire to really get into the music and learn and learn the different ways the forms work and just that style of guitar playing that, that picking kind of that the feel of it, you know? I, uh, so yeah, that was, and the first time I heard Jubu, that was around the same time. And, and then I spanky, God rest his soul, Spanky Alfred, and uh, you know all all the church guys, Jonathan DeBose. That was I learned all of that right, probably right around the time I was nineteen, twenty years old, and it was you know game changing, right? Because that right. was you know just you know a whole different approach. You know, with with a lot of the same elements from music I already knew, like jazz and rock and gospel and everything else, but it was a different approach, and so and you know. So cool. What real, just real quick, then we'll move on. But what, like, what advice would you give a lot of the younger guitar players and, and, and older guitar players that's that wants to that wants that want to learn about it? What would you What would you tell them, or what would you advise them? Because 
you know, you, you just put it right, man. It's kind of a, it's a gumbo pot of everything kind of mixed in one. It's not difficult, mm -hmm. but it is all about the feel. So what would you advise guitar players, man? Well, I just, you know, learn as many records as you can and, and really get, get into the, you know, don't just learn the guitar part, learn, listen to the melody, learn, learn everything you can, you know, anything you can get your hands on and, uh, you know, take it to the, uh, to the extreme, but, uh, man, you know, and it never stops. Just, just keep learning, you know, and, and that's, it, it's it'll keep you young it'll keep you you know sounding fresh but you know as many different styles as you can get into as much uh you know and, and also throwing yourself into situations where you're uncomfortable like that those first few gigs i was you know i didn't really know what i was doing but you just kind of fight through it and do the best you can you know, not every gig is going to be great and, the, and you learn from those you know, you learn from, from when you don't have a good day, you would make some mistakes. And come on, I mean, every gig, I'm screwing up at some point. People might not know it because, you know, you learn how to play it off as you get older. But it's, uh, you know, it's a never-ending learning process. And, and, you know, don't get discouraged. Just keep going. Keep learning. Keep every piece of music you can get your hands on. Get into it. You, you know, you know, and I, and that's good. That's good advice because what it is, it's definitely a whole nother culture and it's a whole nother world. And you're, you were blessed, man, because man, you ended up hanging around with Eric Pickfunk Smith, you know, um, Jubu, um, you know, Carl Wheeler, you, you ended up like, like around these guys, like constantly. And yeah, um, I, I was very, very lucky, very blessed person to have that experience when I was at that age. So, so you you in, you ended up taking and jumping right in and really understand what the what that is like, man. Because because it is, you know, it's kind of a thing to where, you, you know, we you know if you, those guys were born and raised. They came out the into the world just period, just that, and um, they ended up putting it, making the you ended up making it a part of your DNA to where. You know, don't don't get it twisted, man. You can sit down on the quartet gig and and smash it just because you know the history. You do know the music. You know, um, you you know you you got a big encyclopedia of music and records that you've studied and listened to the great ones. And now you're able to apply it to Janet and to everything you're doing, man. With it, it's really crazy what you can do with that style of playing. Um, you know, yeah. it's really anyway, man. Let's move. I could talk about this all day, but let's kind of continue yeah, on. We can do a whole episode just on quartet music. Come on, man. So, but let's let's kind of continue it with this. Tell me, um, what John Jubu Smith means to you, man? Oh man, well he's yeah, he's my favorite guitar player, and he's my brother, and I love him to death, and. Uh, you know, he's the baddest man on a guitar in the world, and there's nobody I love playing with more. And I, you know, lucky I've gotten to play with so many great guitar players over the years, but, you know, we definitely have a connection that we built. And, uh, you know, our band, Legally Blind, we've been playing for 20 some odd years now, which I can't believe I'm saying, but uh, every time we play together, it's magic. And, uh, you know, he's meant so much to me. I've learned so much from him. Uh, yeah, I love him. That's my brother. And, and and it goes back to what we was talking about like a minute ago, man, because you were basically raised around these cats, man. These cats, you know, they raised you into this this thing, man. And, the music. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. They, 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 they were my second family when I moved to the Bay Area. And and they were, you know, so I, I can't say enough about them. It's, it's, you know, that not only they're musical prowess is, you know, it's really geniuses, these guys, both of them. And, and Carl, too. I mean, I, all these guys I got to be around when I was 19, 18, 20 years old, I, and I didn't know at the time. I'm like, man, these guys created so much incredible music. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, to get to be around that and, and learn from them and, and, you know, their patience with me uh, you know, priceless stuff. I, I'm I'm very lucky to have those guys in my life. So, 
moving on, man. So I, I remember when I got the word that you, you were moving to L.A. And, man, you know, it didn't take long um, before I started hearing your name more and more just in the industry, man. You know, I'm, you know uh, I, it just didn't take long, dude. So when you moved to L.A., did you ha already have a job lined up, lined up, or did you just go? Tell me what that what that situation was like. I pretty much just went. I mean, I, at the so I moved to, back to LA in two thousand five, and, and I had already been working a lot. Uh, you know, the, the few years before that, I had done the gigs we talked about with with Sheila and Beyonce, and I started working with Layla Hathaway with Eric and Brisson Patterson. And Fantasia, I actually got the, the job musical directing Fantasia around 2004, 2005. That's where I met my wife. And that's when we both kind of decided she was living in Florida. And I was living in the Bay Area. We decided to both move to L.A. because we could both, you know, work there. And I, I'd also been playing with Mary Mary. That's right. Uh, Eric got me on that gig. I met Teddy Campbell and Teddy... Uh, encouraged me to move and he got me on a bunch of jobs too he he uh he was instrumental in uh, a bunch of my work when i moved to la so that was right around yeah 2005. when um i i don't know so 2005 tell me the order man because there's stevie wonder that you spend a long time, and are you, I don't. I'm mean, probably still, but I'm not really sure. So, kind of give me a rundown of the of the order because it was so many. So, 2005, you get there, and because I want to get to, I want to get to the whole Ricky Minor thing, man, and how how that whole thing came about. Okay, so so yeah, so leading up to that, I, I pretty much gave you all the all the work I did up until then. That, uh, you know, a lot with Eric, Jason Chazé was another one. And uh, that, uh, again, uh, we opened up for Britney Spears, so I was around Teddy a bunch more on that. He was the musical director for Britney Spears. So moved to L.A. in 2005, and the first gig I got called for from Ricky was High School Musical, which was this Disney Tour. And I, I hadn't had kids yet, so I had no idea what it was. But it was apparently like the biggest selling CD of the year or something. And um, so I did that. And then straight from that, I did the Christina Aguilera tour. That was 2007, six, seven, I think seven. And, uh, and so, yeah, once, once, once Ricky, I met Ricky and I did that first Disney tour he started calling more i did the the grammys with him for the first time in 2006 then i did christina and then right from christina i went and auditioned for stevie that was 2007 and i was with him for about 10 years regularly i still play for him i'll still get the call every now and then but i left to go to janet in 2015 so and you've been there since hey so let's, let's talk about the stevie first of all man big shout out to teddy Teddy Campbell, man, big shout out to you, my yeah, brother. Yeah, just Teddy, wanna just I love you. I love you, Teddy. And, and and major and major big shout out to Ricky Minor, man. Ricky Minor, the king, man. Good, good, great, 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 just phenomenal, phenomenal blessings, man. And what you have yeah. sold, the seeds you have sold into this world of music, man. Dude, I commend you, man. And 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 dude, I, I have so much respect for you, bro. Um well, what, what, what was it like, man, working with Stevie Wonder, man? Tell, tell me just a little bit about that experience, bro. That, that was, a, I mean, that was a huge deal for me. I, I, that, that was the first artist. I grew up listening to Stevie Wonder. My parents listened to Stevie Wonder, you know. That was, I think, their, their song first started dating was I Was Made to Love Her, whatever year that was, 69, 68. And so getting the call to audition for him was, you know, was huge. And I already knew a lot of his music. I, at one point in the Bay, I played in a Stevie Wonder cover band. So I had a little bit of a head start on some of his music. But uh, getting to be in the room with him and do all those tours, because he, when he rehearses, he, he does not rehearse anything that he does in the show. He, he just wants to jam and write new music and kind of bounce ideas off people. 
So getting to kind of see his process, getting to be in the studio with him and recording, uh, I mean, I, you, you know, he's, he's Stephen Wonder. He's a living legend, an icon, arguably the greatest songwriter of all time. You know, he's one of these, one of those names. So getting to do that again, I mean, I, I, I can't tell you what an honor it was and, and, you know, just a good time. We had so much fun learning that music, playing that music, touring the world. Um, I hope some of those records be recorded way back when come out. I hear they might, but, you know, <laughs> he hasn't, he hasn't released any music since I think 20 years ago. So wow. he's overdue. Come on, Stevie, put it out. Come on. <laughs> Definitely yeah. put them out, man. Wow. That's great, man. That's cool. That's cool, man. Dude, I, I'm just listening to you talk, and, man, you've been blessed, man. Your career has just been just absolutely unbelievable. So now, 2015 with Janet. Um, yep. How That's has... I that was also through Eric. Eric was playing bass with her, and, and Adam Blackstone was her musical director. Right. Uh, you know, and that I got the call for that, and there was as I had to make one of those decisions. Stevie had a tour at the same time, uh, but she had a lot more work coming up, and it was a new opportunity, and it just made sense for me. Wow! So. Wow, man! And a big shout out, big shout out to Adam Blackstone, man, another giant, another king, and you know hey, the man. seeds that he are, is showing and and, and sowing into. The, this this world of music, man, is just and this generation is just absolutely been phenomenal. And it's crazy, man. All why they all got to be bass players, man. That's the part. I don't know if I like that part about it. They all just ridiculous bass players. That's the part, man. But like you, bass ain't enough. You got to do every damn thing else and do it great. Right. right. <laughs> but but hey, man. I don't know. I don't know how they do it, man. Honestly, man. God, it's, it's handling all of that responsibility outside of just playing the bass. Bro, I'm, you, hey man, it's making bass world proud, man. Y'all keep making bass world proud. You know, Absolutely. shout out to all the bass players, man, being being do, yep. doing their thing, man. Um, but so so with Janet, with Janet, you've been there since 2015, and you're still there, yes, sir. right? Still there. So yep. how's that been, man? How's it been for you? Oh, it's been great. It's been great, man. Good. Once again, I'm, I'm out there with my brother Eric Smith playing bass. And that music is is so uh, is so funky, man. This is this funk podcast, right? I mean, and you were there in the beginning, so you were there setting all that stuff up for us, and uh, it's been a blast, man. She's a sweetheart. She's you know great to work for, work with. Uh, everybody around her is great. It's 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 been like uh, like Stevie, an amazing blessing and a great learning experience for me. Wow. So, great. Yeah, playing that music, man, you know, is, um, for me, was just, um, bruh, I, I can't even explain it, man. Um, especially, you know, having, you know, with Chucky and, you know. Yep. And, and yeah, what the, a band, the, man. What a band. Yeah, especially, and then, and then the trust that Jack. Tommy Jan, and, they, and oh, Dave Barry and. Oh, man. Dave Barry, Tommy O, Derek Organ, uh, Rex Silas, and you know Tim Tim yeah. Bali. Just you know, it, it just it was just a funky band, and the singers and the dancers. But the thing that was cool about it was that you know the the trust that she had in Chucky Booker, and the trust that they had in each other to put the show together, and the trust that Jimmy and Terry had in Chucky to to put the show together. And now here I'm watching my little brother Pig, you know, step in those shoes. And um and fill some giant shoes with Daniel and um you know rest well dude, yeah. and um yeah. but that was a tough one. but the respect that you know and and the trust that she has in him has just been from what he tells me has just been phenomenal and um, yeah and you know the trust that you know it's still gonna the legacy still continues on and be greater and greater just the levels just grow 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 and. I'm proud of I, I'm proud because two of my brothers, you know, is is got that ship running, man. Is a part of the, is on the train, got that thing going, yeah, man. man. So so man, I'm yeah, really we're, we're we're so we 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 are uh, you know filling some 
big shoes with you and for everybody that's been there. But uh, there was a, we went and had breakfast in Sacramento when we were on tour. It was a, uh, October or something like that. Yeah. And sitting there, and that, that was, that was so cool to think about that. Like, man, we got, between all of us, we got 40 years with Janet Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> And, and, but I mean that music and, and you mentioned Jimmy and Terry who produced all that stuff I mean just such such cool music such such fun music to play uh, and yeah Eric is doing a great job and uh, I, I do have to mention you know we, we, we said but Daniel Jones who is our MD when I started 2015 God rest his soul he uh, he left us he he uh, moved on last year that one really hurt a lot that's my brother i love him so much and uh, god bless his family and um but you know it's what's what's amazing thing about someone like daniel who's a, a very short fella but a giant in terms of his personality and his influence you know we we became really really good friends when we met on that gig right at the beginning of 2015 and uh to be doing this work now i mean it was it was very hard of course, at first, coming back without him there. But Eric has really stepped up and has done an amazing job. And I feel like Daniel's with us all the time. You know, he's, he's, he's such a great influence on us as people and as musicians. Just a brilliant guy. And I miss him so much. But uh, love you, Daniel. Yeah, man. Big, big shout out to Daniel, man. You know, highly missed. I mean, just was like you said, man, just a, a giant and... And you know the the, the I, I I never met him personally, man. But every everything I've ever you know witnessed and to see and just the brotherhood and sisterhood that I hear talk about him, it's nothing but greatness, man. So and yeah. you know amazing and, guy, hilarious yeah. guy. We had, we had such a yeah. great time out on the road. It was really yeah. and, family, and, all of us. And you know when that the time of his passing, man, I lived that pain through my brother E Smith, man, and um, yeah. that just said a lot about the brother, you know, because I saw yeah. how how he is st still and still is still, you know, suffering behind it. Oh, I'm sure all you guys are. Um so Absolutely. Yeah. I think about him all the time. Yeah, the time. man. Much great deal of respect, man, for for a rest in peace, man, and blessings to your family, bro. You know, blessings to his yeah. family and uh, to keep moving and staying strong. Um you you know, um you'll never get over but but you will learn to, uh, you know, you learn to adjust, you know, just yeah. to, to adjust, and 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 it's still dip, very difficult. For that. And thank God, you know, mm -hmm. I feel so blessed to have had him in my life, you know, all of us, like to have to have had that as a gift, you know, yeah, somebody like that. Sure, so. man. Much respect, much love, um, Errol. So, you, your career, the stuff that you've been able to do with Ricky and all the stuff that you guys have done and have accomplished, man, it's just been phenomenal. Um, how long, I mean, how many honors have you, have you, I just saw the last one, it was phenomenal. Um, and the Thank band, you. man, you know, that, that band, dude, was just, you know, it was just crazy. With Paul Jackson, see, I was a Paul Jackson Jr. fan, man, as a kid, man, when I heard him playing on all the George Duke records. I mean, it was him and Michael Cimbello, man. Those guys, for yeah. me, those guys were just like, you know, killing it. And then I remember Paul Jackson when he was on the episode of Good Times, man. You know what I'm saying? When he was playing. <laughs> and every time I see it, I crack up. But but the band, man, with with, with Wayne and all, just everybody, just phenomenal, man. And has that unit, you know, that unit is just ridiculous, right? Just yeah. that, just that, that job alone, just with, you know, working with, through Ricky and the band, man, you've been able to accomplish a lot of things, man, just so many things to even cover, um, but how many of the honors have you been a part of? The uh, Kennedy Center Honors, I've done, I think it's seven, I, I, the first one I did was 2015, and I missed one year because Janet was on tour. But I've done all the rest of them, so I think seven, seven, eight. I think it's seven. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, working with that band has been so great, and what um, I love it. I've gotten to do a bunch of shows with Paul. So, so the band is it's Teddy on drums, uh, Ricky, 
Wayne Lindsay, Dave DeLone on keys, Dave DeLone on, on guitar too. That's another bad dude, man, on everything he plays. Um, wow. Kevin Ricard, usually Miguel, Ray, and Garrett on horn. Just a phenomenal band. Yeah. And getting to sit next to Paul Jackson and, you know, work out guitar parts. Again, I like, Sometimes it's like, man, I, I can't quite believe, you know, like you said, he played on every record I listened to, you know, all the Michael Jackson stuff is just goes on and on. But when Paul wasn't there, the first year I did the Kennedy Center was actually Dean Parks playing guitar, another hero guitar player who's been on a million records on all the Steely Dan stuff that I listened to. So, so being in those situations, the award shows where everything's coming at you really fast and, you know. Thank God Ricky trusted me to do it from pretty early on, you know, when Paul couldn't be there or when he could, you know, both of us. Uh, that was a huge learning experience, you know, get, get figured out my reading because I didn't really used to be a, a reader. Uh, that was something when I moved to L.A. that I, 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 the first award show he hired me for. You know, he could kind of tell that I wasn't really reading. I was, it was more like I memorized the stuff and then the charts were just sitting there. Um, but, you know, it moved so fast. He, he took me aside and he was really, you know, cool about it. He was like, you know, just just get your hands on some music and start reading it. Just repetition. Just start whenever you can. And I took his advice and, you know, I'm still, again, I'm still learning. I always get better. But... Uh, doing those reading gigs and, and learning how to kind of use your eyes with your ears because not everything's going to be on the paper, feel and all that stuff. That was something that I've gotten to uh, learn a lot about working with that band, the Ricky Minor band wow. over the years. So another big blessing. Another standing O, another standing O for that band, man, and, and Ricky, man, another standing hey, man. O, man. Another standing O. Man. Amazing just, dude. Absolutely, you, man. Yeah, right on, man. So before I let you go, man, let's talk about legally blind. Let's yeah. talk about let's talk about legally blind, man. You guys, that band is, and I'm a little. I don't know. People say I'm biased, and if you say that, that's fine because you know these are all my. This is really my family. But man, your band, the band is second to none, man, and just phenomenal, man. Phenomenal, phenomenal. Um, what are you guys doing now? What's in the horizons, man, for, for Legally Blind? Well, I mean, we uh, we have a show coming up in Berkeley in a couple weeks, actually. Uh, and then we got a couple other things lined up. You know, we're trying to kind of fit it in. The tough thing about that band is everybody's working, you know, which is great. Everybody's got to pay their mortgages and bills, etc. But... Uh, but man, we we're we're working on new music. We got to record. We we uh, we're talking about um, oh, wow. um, oh man, I can't I can't think of the show. But but there's a, a bunch of stuff on the horizon, man, and and uh, you know can't wait to get back out there. That's that's. That music is my heart, Legally Blind. So go check that out, Legally Blind, with a Y, B-L-Y-N-D. And uh, we'll be, be coming to a town near you soon. And, just, and, if you, and if you guys hear them coming, please go check them out because, you know, the, the, the band is just ridiculous. Um, you know, just you and Jubu alone, just, that's just not a fair fight, bro. It's just not a fair fight. Oh. Well, hey, you know, I, I learned early on when playing with you, but don't approach it as a fight. We're we're a team. You know? <laughs> that's a good. That's because good. If you approach him like, hey, I'm gonna battle. It's not gonna go well. It's yeah, it's gonna be all bad for you. <laughs> I hear so many people say that, man. They tried. They tried. They tried. You. He was. Jude was talking about his print story. You know, on 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 the. Yeah, on, on I the was play. there for that one. On, 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 so you were a witness? <laughs> I was a witness. I was there. <laughs> we, were, we were playing. Me and we were at his house in L.A. And, you know, we I can't remember. I think it was after a Guadalupe show. We all were invited up to his house. He would have these crazy late night jam session parties at his house in L.A. And me and June sat there and played. And we did our usual thing. We, 
you know, trading off and having a great time. And then Prince came up and said, hey, I want to play with him for a little while. I said, all right. I hand him the guitar and the rest is history. I love how you tell the story, man, because you, you said the same thing that they said, but just the way you said it was like, I ain't got to say much, just I'm going to say this and enough is enough. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, you know, I don't want to say anything negative, but you can infer. I'll tell you what, Jubu, Jubu had a lot of screaming going on in that room that day, but uh, it was good. It's all good. I can't believe I again. Sometimes I, I, you know, I feel like Forrest Gump in these situations. Like, man, I'm sitting here watching Prince and Jubu. You know, my brother Jubu and Prince trade off in his house. Wild, wild the stuff I've gotten to see. Oh man, listen, man. Before I let you go, man, what do you? What's your? What do you think about the new? The new generation, these new millennials, man, because there's. You know, you're you're younger than me, but but there's a there's a couple of generations now that's coming up under you, man. They're 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 they're, they're growing them and breeding them really young, man. And what's what's your yeah. take on what's your thought process, man, about where where we are right now with this with this world of musicians, man, guitar players, man. Well, I mean, there's it's it's amazing. There's a lot of really talented young musicians coming up, and I and I you know I don't know them all, but I keep hearing stuff. It's just, it is it is amazing how quickly times have kind of shifted. And it's it's a different world. The way, the way there's so much more information information available, you know, to, to young musicians. There's YouTube and there's, you know, all the streaming services. So you have an endless supply of music, you know, to, to study and learn from. So I feel like, and, I, and it's probably been true of every generation. You know, every generation has a little bit more material to pull from from the last and so each generation you know tends to grow as musicians a little quicker than the last but i i mean i love everything i'm hearing all these uh young guys there's a, a guy i just met recently but you know uh god I, you know, again my my memory for names is really bad but you know you got guys like chris payton and jarris who are probably 10 years younger than me or just out of this world on guitar and um, I mean there's so many I don't want to forget anybody Agape and then there's a new generation coming up below them you know there's uh, and uh, you know it's just it's really exciting there's, there's there's a lot of really great musicians coming up and I'm enjoying hearing them any any advice man you would give to these guys because you, you've been in this business for a long time and I'm sure there's been ups, I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'm sure there's ups and downs that you've been through, right? Uh, we all have. Yeah. I know I know I have, and still dealing with them. Is there is there Absolutely. any advice that you would give to, you know, those guitar players about the business, and you know, just anything you would say to them? Uh, well, it's, there's, I mean, there's a lot of there's so much advice I could give but the, I mean the biggest thing is just keep stay true to, to the music part of it keep keep learning and keep growing musically and, and uh, you know the rest of it kind of will take care of itself be a good be a good person you know try and get along with everybody don't uh, overstay your welcome don't get too excited when you have some success you know there's a great there's a great great uh, little clip i think with robert de niro saying like okay so there you're, there will come a time in your life where you will get a big job a big gig and you'll feel on top of the world just stay calm stay stay calm don't let it get to your head because that's not a guarantee that there will be something else afterwards you know it's it's a great thing that you have it be thankful you know be grateful but but don't get too excited and don't get you know don't let your ego get the better that's a that's a great piece of advice from from an actor, and uh, you know, just keep learning, never stop learning, and uh, you know, be careful because there are some snakes and sharks out there. But you know, if, if you stay true to yourself, you stay honest musically and in other ways, I think I think that stuff tends to take care of itself. That's beautiful stuff, man. That's beautiful stuff. Um, 
is there uh, will there be a solo album for man for Earl I so. I've been working on one for one forever that uh, there the, there's stuff in the works there's a solo album in the works there's a new Legally Blind album in the works and it's coming it might come in singles I'm not sure if I'm going to put out a whole album but uh, uh, it might just be singles or an EP or something like that it's coming soon well please do man because you know um, you know please do make it happen and I, you know, through all the other stuff you got on your plate, because I know it's, I know it's thick and rich, man. Listen, before I let you go, you got four guitar players. You're gonna put on Mount Rushmore. What, <laughs> what what four guitar players oh, you gonna put on your That's Mount a Rushmore? Tough one. Four. Well, at least you're giving me four, though, because some people just <laughs> one. I, there's no way I can pick one. Um. Ah, uh, God, that is so tough. I got to put Jubu up there. I've got to put, I mean, man, it's too hard. I got to put, um, I got to put, I love when it's like this. I love. I got about twenty of them running through my head. I love when I'm it's. Put Eddie Van Halen on there. Okay. I'm put David Gilmore on there. I'm gonna put Jimmy Page on there. I want to put Jimi <laughs> Hendrix on there. I want to put Albert King. All three Kings: BB King, Albert King. Uh, I want to put uh, <laughs> Pat Martino on there. I want to put Paul Jackson on there. I want to put Mike Sabello on there. There's more. I love it. <laughs> Theme parks. <laughs> I, hey, man, I love it because I've never had somebody just run with everybody, man. <laughs> I, love it. I can't. I can't whittle it down. I mean, you know, but my earliest influences, Jenny Page, you know, all the classic rock guys. And then it changed. You know, they, there's different. There's di if you go through each period of my musical growth, there's a different group of guitar players that kind of goes with it. But man, there's so many great ones out there. And so many I didn't mention that I'm just not thinking of. Hey man, I I love it when this question is like this because dude, it, it just but you 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 get the award, bro, for the for the best answer so far because you just ran away with the whole thing. I love it, man. I love it. But dude, you know, not only me, but I'm sure a whole lot of people is going to put Errol Cooney on there. You're going to be, you're going to be my, my pick that I'm going to put you on there, little bro, because trust me, man, I've watched where you, uh, where you come from. I watch your growth and man, I can't tell you, man, you know, how proud I am of you, man, to see, you know, oh, thank you, you man. know what you've been doing with really your life good. and your career, bro. Um, I'm, I'm seriously proud that I know you, man, and that, I'm, that you, my, my younger brother, man, and, just proud of you, man, as, as a husband, as a father, and what you're doing with your life right now, man, and your success, Thank you, man. and uh, and just you know keep doing what you're doing, bro. You you got a lot of love and support from me, dog. You can come, best believe that one. Oh, uh, thank you, D. That means so much. And you know, you know, I love you, and man, I learned much, so much from you. You know, we didn't get to talk about you at all in this interview. <laughs> Not so, supposed to. Not man. supposed to, man. <laughs> Funny. You funny, dude. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, come on. That, that, you want to talk about quartet, guitar, and bass, and funk, bass, and guitar? Right it's, there. It's okay. Oh. Interview over, bro. <laughs> hey, man, I love you, man. Hey, Errol, tell everybody how they can reach you and how they can contact you, bro. Uh, I'm on all the social medias. Errol Cooney, just my full name. E R R O L C O O N E Y. At Errol Cooney. Uh, Instagram is kind of the one I keep up with the most, but uh, it's all of them, all the same. And uh, Legally Blind, that's the band with the Y B L Y N D. We've got a website, legallyblind.com. And uh, keep an eye out, man. We'll be out there. Come to the scene near you. Man, Earl, listen, brother, once again, thank you so much. And y'all, do me a favor. Please go follow my brother. Uh, keep up with him. Um, his career has been 
just phenomenal at such a young age. And uh, I'm proud to see him still doing his thing. Um, you know, getting ready to go back out with Janet and just, um, you know, and, and doing his thing. And But everybody, just play with everybody. He's another one of these guys that, you know, just you know, pick a name. I'm sure he's worked with them. So, um, and I and I thank you, man, for sharing this time uh, with me. I don't take it lightly, bro. Thank you, thank you, thank you, man. Thank you. I appreciate it, man. It's been fun. And before you know, before y'all leave this thing, go on and like, subscribe to the pray to the page, share it with your people, um, so you know they can meet people like this brother here, right? So yo, y'all show your love one more time. Give it up. For my brother, my brother from another mother, from somebody's mother, I don't know, but <laughs> my brother, the, just one of the greatest guitar players that I know, Mr., the one and the only, Earl Cooney. Hey, thank you, man. Thank you, man. I appreciate you, Dave. Much love, brother. Love you, man. Much love, man. I love you, too. Right on. <laughs>